Hello sir, I am Junior Asutosh and I am looking for the opportunities in AI email domain and that is why I have scanned various job portals like LinkedIn and uh, Nokri and I found uh, like uh, most of the companies are looking for uh, ML Ops as a major tech skill in this domain. So could you please help me understand what is ML Ops and how can I be job ready with ML Ops? Hello, good to have you Junior. So uh, your query is uh, what is ML Ops, right? Okay. So let me explain. MLOps is nothing but the set of practices which are used to uh, deploy machine learning models in production. And when we say production, what does it mean? It is nothing but uh, uh, ML model should be uh, deployed in a very uh, reliable and efficient manner. And the most importantly, uh, ML uh, like uh, the model accuracy should be good enough over the period of time. When I say over the period of time, right? So we should have something in production running continuously to monitor the model performance, right? So that's where like this uh, machine learning model deployment is uh, like uh, dif different from normal software deployment. But that uh, we'll discuss later, like how DevOps or software practices are different from machine learning or ML ops practices. Okay. Coming back to this point, so. Uh, this is uh, basically about ML Ops, right? It is a set of practices used to uh, deploy the machine learning model in production reliable and efficiently. But now, uh, if I uh, let's go in more detail, and if you want to understand this in more detail, then you should be aware of like uh, what are the challenges uh, we face or ML engineer face when he deploys the uh, model in production. And from there, the concept of ML Ops comes in place. Because what are the challenges we, uh, we face and then we need to do something to overcome those challenges, right? So let me uh, list down all the topics, uh, what uh, you need to focus uh, while studying MLOps, okay? So that your MLOps uh, uh, journey will become easy. So the very first concept you need to focus under MLOps is data versioning. So what is data versioning and why it is important? So let me quickly cover it. So the uh, if any different time period you want to uh, replicate uh, the model performance, okay, model output. Then that time uh, you need uh, like uh, data which was uh, recorded before and and uh, for same uh, problem what is the data today okay so because data gets changed over the period of time and that's where model will behave differently so that's why to replicate the performance we need to have data versioning because so there are different mechanisms the different tools uh, which are in industry uh, which are used for data versioning another important uh, concept you need to focus under ml ops is uh, experiment tracking or it is also known as like model tracking so what it is so when you uh, train a model you do different experiments for example uh, you uh, have a different set of parameters known as hyperparameters and for each uh, set of hyperparameters you uh, get a different model right and then uh, at the end uh, you compare all those models trained from different set of hyperparameters and you see like which model has uh, optimal performance so you need to store those experiments somewhere so that you can do the comparison. So for that, uh, we should have some uh, mechanism exist to uh, store those uh, experiments. So that's where experiment tracking or model tracking comes in picture. So in industry, MLflow is the widely used tool which is used for this uh, M uh, machine, uh, sorry, uh, experiment tracking or model tracking purposes. Okay. Then another important concept comes like uh, feature store. So uh, when uh, you train the model, you do uh, in one of the machine learning lifecycle step, you have a uh, feature engineering, right? So when you do feature engineering, you come up with an important set of features. You do some transformation, you generate some new features, okay? In various methods, you get uh, certain uh, features, you finalize some features, which will be finally used uh, for the uh, training of the model, okay? And later for, uh, you will uh, send those features for water prediction as well. So in that case, you need to have some storage mechanism for those features so that uh, when you are uh, predicting, uh, when you have model in deployment and you are sending those features, so, so you should have a low latency, right? It should not be a very time taking uh, in model serving, right? So that's what feature store uh, provides the uh, concept of feature serving with, uh, with very low latency during online serving. So that is the feature store concept. Another important concept in uh, MLOps is a model registry or model versioning. 
So like code version in normal software practice, and here we need to do the model version also, and for that we need model registry. So model registry is nothing but it is a, like a storage for models, where we store the different versions of model. Okay. So that is that. Another uh, important concept after model registry is, see, you have uh, now you have uh, experiments, you have uh, trained model, and now what you need to do, you need to deploy the model, right? Then it comes model deployment or model serving. So what does it mean by model deployment and model serving? So you should have again some mechanism to uh, deploy the model very efficiently and also taking care like uh, when model is deployed, uh, if there is a need to scale it uh, runtime, then scalability should be in place and various other uh, important concepts, right? So another when you deploy the model then uh, it should be consumable by end user okay then we should have some uh, apis also exposed so that uh, that apis can be uh, utilized by uh, end users or any other third party application okay. so that's where model deployment or model serving comes in place now your model is deployed it is serving also it is uh, outputting also okay what is next next thing is like you need to monitor that model right because uh, you need to be sure like uh, uh, your model is performing uh, in the desired level of output okay your model performance is not de degrading over the period of time there could be various reason why model performance could degrade we'll discuss later but right now i'm focusing on the important topics so this uh, uh, model monitoring is one of the important concept okay and then from here only the another concept is like model drift so model drift is directly related with the uh, model performance degradation over the period of time. So uh, there are two main types of drifts like uh, one is uh, data drift, one is concept drift. So data drift is related with like when you have uh, some changes in your uh, independent variables. Okay, it could be seasonality or it could be any other outside factor. Okay, because of that your independent uh, variable behavior got changed. Okay, and then it will have direct impact on model performance. Another kind of drift is known as concept drift and that is related with your target variable. Okay? When uh, like uh, some external factor, for example, pandemic happens, right? So behavior of this target variable will get changed. So that's where like uh, concept drift appear. Okay? So you need to understand these kind of drifts as well while preparing ML ops. Okay? So this is another concept. And uh, two more concepts left uh, like after model monitoring and model drift, uh, what could be? Let's see. Now uh, you observed, for example, the model performance is degrading. So what will you do, right? You need to uh, take certain actions, right? So for that, we have a concept like continuous training. So continuous training is the most widely uh, used buzzword in the uh, ML ops. Okay. So when uh, there is a degradation in model performance, you need to have some mechanism which will automatically trigger the retraining of the model. Okay. So that's where continuous training is very important. And after continuous training, of course, uh, you have everything in place, then you need to uh, build some pipeline to uh, so that it takes care of all the steps automatically, okay? Then we'll have, we need to build the jobs and pipelines, and then we need to take care of the scheduling, okay? So there are certain tools which, which take care of these things. And then like uh, nowadays, uh, like uh, we, uh, in AI industries, uh, people have started talking on the model explainability as well, okay? So it is like sometimes we call it model explainability or AI explainability. Both are somewhat similar. So what it is basically? So see when model uh, giving you some outcome, right? So for the end user, it is a black box, right? He doesn't know uh, why, uh, why, and on, on what basis a model is producing this output, right? So it is uh, hard to believe whether model is giving you the right set of output or it is wrong. So that's where to remove this black box concept of uh, model output, we have something called model explainability. So that we should have some mechanism which explains the reasoning behind the particular output, why model is producing this output, which are the uh, variables, which are the features uh, most important for this particular output. Okay, so that's where model explainability comes in place. So uh, these are the important concepts that you should focus uh, on studying the ML ops. Okay. So what is that? Uh, first one is like data versioning. Then we have uh, experiment tracking or model tracking. Then we have uh, feature store. Then we have model registry. Then we have model deployment or model serving. Then we have model monitoring. 
Then we have uh, model drifts, that's where comes as data drift and concept drift. Then we have uh, continuous monitoring. Then we have uh, at the end model explainability. So if you, of course, this, uh, every topic is, is washed in, a, in itself, but we are, you need to uh, give some time, spend some time and focus one by one each topic. And that's where uh, you will be more confident while appearing in the interviews. You can easily un, uh, answer each and every uh, question in the interview if you prepare all these uh, topics. So that's it. I hope it uh, clears your doubt. At least you have some sort of understanding what is MLOps and what are the topics under MLOps. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. At least now I understand what are the different topics under MLOps and that will certainly help me in uh, going through the uh, MLOps journey and I will cover each topic one by one. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.